One of the ways you can tell the feelings you have for that person is right is by the peace of God that envelops you. If you have that peace, nothing can protrude or disturb you. It is one of the key ways through which God communicates to his children. If you lose your peace whenever you are with that person or think about them, it might be a warning sign that you should withdraw and not go ahead. God created us for his purpose and fulfilling that purpose should be our major goal. Now, anybody that God would introduce into your life will be someone who would help you in this course rather than distract you. If you share the same visions and would be able to walk hand in hand to accomplish what God has assigned you to do, then your feelings for that person is right and you can be sure that it is God's choice for you. All these are based on your relationship with God. It is only when you communicate with God regularly that you will know when He is speaking to you. Hence, you must learn to cultivate and build your relationship with God. With Him, you can never go wrong. Even with a believer, you might develop feelings that are not based on love. People become attracted for different reasons and before you know it, they think they have the right person. It might be the way she smiles or wears her hair, his gentlemanliness or build, the way he or she speaks, walks or thinks, the way they dress or how they affect people around. The list is endless and being a spirit-filled believer does not exempt you from observing all these things. We are bound to be attracted to someone by one of these things. However, you should check those feelings properly and ascertain that they are not based on lust or mundane things. Do you love this person for who they are or just what they have? Take away the beauty or intelligence. Would you still love them the same? After a few years when your curiosity has been satisfied and those things that once intrigued you no longer interest you, would there be anything to hold on to? Feelings are very fickle and could change with time. See the story of Amon and Tamar. According to the scriptures, Amon loved Tamar so much that he became sick. 2 Samuel 13, 1, 2 says, After Absalom, the son of David, had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar, and Amon, the son of David, loved her. 2. Amon was so distressed over his sister Tamar that he became sick, for she was a virgin, and it was improper for Amon to do anything to her. In the end, through the wrong advice of a friend, he eventually got his sister and slept with her. After this, he hated her much more than he had loved her. This was a feeling based on lust, not love. If your feelings are not based on lust, but on things that are pleasing to God, you are on the right path. This is the best way to know if your feelings for a person is right or not. You must learn not to depend on your skills or trust in your ability to discern. Proverbs 3.5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 6. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. It is the Holy Spirit that can help you make the right choice. He can discern the thoughts of man and get through any pretense. Even when all physical evidence and emotional responses are pushing you in a particular direction, the Holy Spirit might tell you not to move that way. If you are sure that the Holy Spirit is leading you in that direction, then you can ahead know you have God's backing and approval. Following God's will and choice for your life in every aspect can be the best decision you will ever make. When God is involved in a venture, you can be sure of its success. This is the more reason you should allow Him to validate every of your life's decision and be sure you are doing the right thing according to God's standard. David was such a man as this. He loved and had a strong relationship with God such that he would not take any decision without seeking God's direction and opinion on it. We are humans and even the best of men are prone to mistakes and error of judgment. We can become easily carried away by things around us and many a time we allow ourselves to be led by our emotions rather than consulting with the Holy Spirit within us. It is nothing to beat you up about, though even the great prophet Samuel, whose words never fell to the ground, 
made this error of judgment when God asked him to anoint one of the sons of Jesse as king. He took a look at the first son, Eliab, saw his look and build, and thought within his heart, this must be the one the Lord has chosen. But God said no, he has rejected him. The same thing can happen to anyone today, especially when it comes to this thing called love. It can take you unawares, sweep you off your feet, make you do the unimaginable, and change your perspective of life. You wake up one day and suddenly become a philosopher, an observer of nature. There is spring in your steps, joy in your heart, and at that moment, nothing else matters than the feeling you are experiencing. You are in love, and nothing could be better. Yes, love can be beautiful, but if not managed or channeled properly, will only lead to heartbreak. And that is why the Bible tells us to guard our hearts with all diligence. Once you fall in love, it might be difficult to get out and nothing anybody says will make sense to you. At that time, your feelings will become enough evidence as far as you are concerned. Your life as a whole and who you end up with are not different entities in your life. They are very much intertwined and it is for this reason that you might want to be careful about who you develop feelings for and eventually marry. Marriage is not something you just dive into without testing the waters. You might be headed straight to the rocks. The big question is, how do I know the right one? How can I tell if we are meant to be together or not? This question that been around for quite some time and even up till now, many still miss it when it comes to making the right choice. One of the things God makes clear concerning your choice of a partner is written in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, 16. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? 15. And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? 16. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. If the person is not a believer, then there is no way God can approve of that relationship. So, if you're developing feelings for someone who does not share your faith or believe in God, those feelings are not right and need to be nipped in the bud. Do not fall into the trap of thinking that you can change them or bring them to Christ. If you must change their minds, do it without getting your feelings involved and being in a relationship with them should not be the underlying reason for evangelizing the gospel to them. Your feelings can be only validated because it is for a fellow believer like you. You can get God's approval on that relationship and he will bless such a union. This is the foundation on which all things can be built. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. If this foundation is not in place, every other thing you built on it would only crumble in the end. Let it be settled in your heart that anyone that would be God's choice for your life will be a believer first and foremost. You can now consider other things.